I'd like to call upon Sally's subconscious, please. We are here. Thank you so much. Are you able to do a body scan for the body? She is very relaxed. So relaxed. Fantastic. Is there anything that needs to be healed or addressed within her body? <sighs> she has a slight cough right now. And gets a headache every day. It's getting better though. Can we understand what the headache is? Yes, she got really sick many weeks ago. Very sick. Flu, cold, body aches. Her back was hurting so bad in the middle of it. Uh, she found out she had COVID and has been on this journey of healing for weeks. She's not fully healed yet, but she's releasing much. She's releasing a lot of um, past life traumas, and she's had many different types of symptoms throughout this past couple weeks. Not only that, but this has been the longest she's ever just done nothing physical, and she needed that. She needed to be able to understand peace within just sitting and not moving. She moves a lot. We wanted her to sit and relax. She's doing a good job of it. Fantastic. So was that the significance and purpose of her getting COVID? Yes, releasing and learning to relax and be at peace. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Well, thank you for helping her with that. Um, are you able to help her body be balanced and heal anything that needs to be healed throughout the session as we ask questions today? Yes, we will do that. Thank you so much, Subconscious. We really appreciate that. And so we just wanted to confirm that only the Turians can come into the session today. Will you be able to assist us with that? Octarians are only allowed in this session. Yes, that is much accepted. Mm -hmm. We will do that. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate that. Um, and so subconscious, she would like to understand the, she asked you about another significant uh, past lifetime and you keep repeatedly showing her being, um, uh, well, she didn't know whether she was the spotted large cat or whether she was the antelope, but you repeatedly showed her that scene. What would you like her to understand about that? She was having extreme back pain when she um, was going through this process. For the past couple of weeks, it hurt so bad. It was in the middle of her back. It was like on her spine. And it was affecting her. And we released what happened. Um, as the animal, as she was running, she was running away. And the cat got her. It got her on the back. And it started eating her. And it was traumatic. And it was painful. And when we were, we were releasing it, we were releasing it for her. And that's why she, we kept seeing it. She kept seeing it, we kept showing it to her because that was why, it was why. Um, but there is no pain, there's no trauma. 
is released. Thank you. What was the life experience she wanted to have as being that animal? She wanted to know what it was like to um, have the sensation of being eaten. She wanted to actually know. And it wasn't a good feeling. Okay. And so that mission was successful and those lessons were learned. How did she get to apply that? And how did she grow from that experience? A lot more observant outdoors. Um, not making any foolish mistakes. Um, always being aware of possible dangers that you cannot see, but that can creep up on you. Um, she was showing her this actually happened in this lifetime. She likes to run. So she liked to run out in the wilderness all by herself. She liked it because it was fun to her. And she loved the beauty of it and the quiet of it. And so she would go off to like large mountains and run by herself. And there'd be no one around. And one time as she was running two years ago, she felt something watching her and we stopped her and we told her no more you cannot run anymore you must stop there's something there and as we were sending her that message she felt the energy of a large animal behind a rock she couldn't see it but she knew it was watching her and we were yelling at her turn around and she was fighting us because she was thinking and it was all in her head and she was going to keep running up the mountain and we had to stop her and she finally got scared because we were sending her images she turned around and started running the opposite direction there was an animal it was a large cat it was watching her we didn't want her to exit we didn't want anything to happen to her Amazing. Okay. Yes, well, we do know she likes to run. So thank you very much for saving my friend from running. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was, she was fighting us and we were firm. We were stopping her feet. We were saying, no, stop. Like, like red, red, red alert. No more. She's stubborn sometimes. <laughs> But you listen. <laughs> Free wall and all. Okay, well, that is that is incredible. And so that will make so much sense why you gave her that, um, that information because it does apply to the way that she approaches life now. Yes, she she's looks at life almost like in a childish way sometimes. So sometimes we do have to send her those reminders of being more vigilant because she is very much rose-colored glasses head in the clouds a lot mm. well sometimes it's a nice way to live so thank you yes. thank you very much um that is very intriguing and so we're curious about so many things today and uh, she also had a dream where she was told that an orange cylinder that she saw on a ship, I believe, um, was very important and she must remember it. Um, do you know of the dream that we're referring to and what can you tell us? Yes, we know of the dream. It had a circle with a triangle in it and they were pointing it at, they're pointing at the cylinder and they're telling her, don't forget this. 
She was on a ship. It was all white inside. She was sitting around a table having a meeting with many. And they were going over things with her. And she was providing advice. We get a sense that they're almost like her memories, her experiences are somehow, um, I want to say like stored in this cylinder and they can be brought up and applied to things that they want to know so they can figure out um, they can figure out how to use that knowledge for future use or current use. It's like she's explaining to them what she experienced firsthand. And then they're listening. And somehow they're putting it in the cylinder for storage. And then is there only one copy of that information? Or is her life experiences a shared and many people can have access to that information? Uh, we feel like they, they can have access to it. Um, for some reason, that one has to be in, they want to keep it in that ship, that cylinder for some reason, but it can be, it can be copied. It is just for, it's just for whoever's in that ship that wants the information, it's in that cylinder, but it can be provided to others to share. So yes, it, it's uh, copied information. They're not showing us how or where, but it's like, for some reason, they're just showing us that one, but it's not the only one. What does the information on that ship, on that cylinder have? And is it just this lifetime or is it all the lifetimes she's ever lived? Um, it's all the other ones she's ever lived. Off, um, is those off-planet or just this planet? Just this planet. Fascinating. In terms of the ship, what can you tell us? Who has access to being on that ship? Hmm. Well, they're just showing us a table, like a meeting. And it's it's a it's a it's a white, big, long oval shaped table with many chairs around it, also white. The entire interior is completely white and clean looking and bright. We're getting the ones around. Um they're somehow needing this information. They represent, we're getting, they're representing their collective, their species, their home, planet, accessible information about humans, Earth, life here. It's so different here. Fascinating. Okay, well, thank you so much. And so when she was told not to forget it, um, did she forget it? Um, and what was she supposed to do with it? She didn't forget what it looked like. For some reason, they wanted her to remember what it looked like. There's a reason to remember what it looked like. 
Um, she remembered it when she woke up. She drew a picture of it because it was so profoundly etched in her mind. They were telling her, don't forget. And she drew a picture. She has it on a piece of paper. And so the significance of her not forgetting and needing to draw it down, what can you tell us? It's almost like she was in a very sad spot at that time. You're trying to remind her don't forget what you've gone through. Don't look at yourself like that. You're more than just this. You're help. We're trying. We were trying to help her um, get out of the density that she fell into after being so high vibrational, and she went to college. She became more dense because she couldn't relate to anybody. And then other personal things happened. And one by one, she tumbled down a little bit. And we didn't want her to. We wanted her to remember who she is. And help bring up her energy. Thank you. And it seems like you are remembering uh, sorry, it seems like she has been able to remember who she is more and more as she has been more connected to you. Um, is this helping or can you help her remember who she is even more so now? She's, she is remembering um, oh, every day. Where it's like she's getting more uh, tidbits of information, but it is so much that it's, it's um, a process, so we can't, can't give her too much. It's kind of like a little bit at a time. We'll continue doing that. Um, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a um, hourly process, and she's slowly starting to get an idea, but of course, it's not the whole picture. That will help continue with that. Marvelous. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. And um, she was wanting to know um, during those six times where she had the connection to those six people, or is it five people? It was five. Five people. Sorry. When she had those connections with the five people, she felt so very high in th more than 3D. And she said that it sort of would take her a few sort of six months of this, what she sort of thought might have been like a Kundalini awakening of such. Can you help her understand more about that process and why she got access to seeing everything, including um, the, the energy that was being held on to people? Mm -hmm. yes. she well with each connection it was a, an addition of energy so we were blasting more and more energy at her to move through her so she could send it out to others we would make this happen on purpose in public so as many people could experience it as possible. She felt after the walk-in with the first connection, the second connection, she felt lightning bolt shoot straight up her spine. And that's when she felt the connection of the second person. She was gaining more and more of her powers back with the energy. And she was opening up her third eye. 
and where she was receiving as much energy as possible and accepting it. She was accepting it. So we were able to work with her on that and show her more and more things, such as waves of energy, um, angelic beings, ghosts, things that were darker in nature. We were showing her everything just to her to see and accept that things that may seem scary are just a balance of the light and the dark. And it's just what it's, she asked to see everything. She asked to see everything. And so we showed her everything. And it was not for the faint hearted. She had much faith, much faith in God and God energy. And she knew there was a reason for it all. And we were glad that she asked for all this knowledge and information so that she could experience it firsthand. She always wants to experience a lot. So we're excited to give it to her. It did sound like a lot visually to see, and it's so extraordinary um, to have heard the experiences that she has had. So thank you for being able to explain to her now um, your perspective on that and the purpose that she was allowed to um, see those certain things. Um, are you able to share with me uh, why she was allowed to see all of that somewhat shocking um, visuals? Oh, at the end of the question, it cut out. Could you repeat the last part, please? Mm -hmm. um, what did she learn from having those uh, very intensive visuals, given the fact that some of them were very concerning in terms of um, entity attachments to people? Oh, yes. Um, it was just strengthening her own power. She was not really afraid. She was more, I guess you could say more surprised that she was seeing everything. Um, it was bewildering. And she did though have so much faith and love. She tells us, she tells us all the time she loves us. And then she even was saying how much she loves us. And we we're happy for that. And she could feel us. We would, I mean, we would, we are very connected to her. She is very connected to us. So there was less fear, of course, which is why we were able to show her all that. And it was to empower her and to embolden her and show that she really has nothing to actually fear. It's all a mindset. And the more you connect with your teams, the more you'll feel loved and protected. And then you, in turn, will empower yourself. And then you'll be an example for others. And you'll feel more and more, um, I guess you could say positive in life when you start experiencing that. It was almost not like a test, but it was almost like, how will you react with this? And then this, and this. It was to help her. I love that. That makes so much sense. Thank you so much. I'm sure she will listen back and be very proud of <laughs> choices that she's made to empower herself so much. <laughs> she did ask for it. And we listened. <laughs> <laughs> I like that relationship of asking and listening and receiving. That sounds good. <laughs> well thank you very much subconscious we do appreciate that 
in terms of um, out of curiosity um, she did see Jesus and we were curious to ask today if she did have a lifetime um, at the um, that coexisted with the time of Jesus being alive. Hmm. She does love him a lot. She always has. We're trying to see. What relationship she had. <laughs> hmm. uh, should we see a older woman hugging him? My son, my son. <laughs> She's seeing a woman saying my son and hugging Jesus. And so, in that lifetime, was it the only, did Jesus have one lifetime on earth or did he ever have many? He's had many, our reincarnations, yes he has. And she was the mother for the Jesus that we know as Jesus. We see him as Jesus. We see him as the Jesus that died on the cross. And she goes up to him and she says, my son. And she hugs him and kisses him on the cheek. How challenging was it to see that crucifixion? crucifixion? <sighs> oh, this is strange. She's had a dream. Um, <sighs> she's. Um, she's had a dream of seeing her um, someone she loved dying on a cross. She woke up crying. She's feeling it again. I'm sorry that she had to feel that. Is she able to release it and subconsciously you able to tell her the significance of why she had to be the mother to see her son have that experience? She 
had to see him and see her son be crucified. So she would know what it felt like <sighs> to lose someone that she loved. She couldn't do anything about it. She couldn't help. And not to hold any bitterness towards the ones who hurt him. Just to help love them. Did Jesus appear to her after he died? He did. <laughs> he came in the house. She was in the house and he just showed up in the house. And he was glowing. <sighs> and she turned around and he was there. She fell on her knees. She said, I knew I knew I could see you again. What did he say to you? <sighs> he said, you have much faith. <sighs> you have much faith. You can... <sighs> Share your faith with others. <laughs> I feel like he said he loves her. Go out and tell others. Tell them what you've seen. Let them know I'm still alive. <sighs> Father loves you. Father loves all. Have no hatred in your hearts. What did, what did she do after um, he exited? Um, what did she do for the majority of her life um, after that point? She stayed. She stayed at the where he where they lived. He stayed with. There's others who are afraid to be killed for their beliefs. They wanted to leave. They wanted to go away and not be there anymore because they were tied to his name. And so they left. You see that she wanted to stay and live out her days there. 
I'm trying to see what happened. He's here in the house, the small house. She feels him a lot. She feels him with her all the time. They wanted her to go with them, but she didn't want to. She said, I'm tired. I'm older. I want to stay here. This is my home. You see her doing chores. She wanted to stay there as a symbol for all those who see her know that Jesus lived there. Jesus was alive. He existed. That was a reminder. And all those he affected with his love. She was the reminder for them. Okay, thank you. Um, in terms of how did she exit from that lifetime? Um, and laying down she's very connected she just said when the father takes me it's my time she knew it was her time and she laid down and went to sleep and exited it was like she was so gentle, so peaceful, so loving. She had a peaceful accent. What was her life purpose in that lifetime? Loving, nurturing, to learn how to treat those around her with gentleness and kindness, to allow her son to be also treated that way. So we can learn what it's like. He was in a loving home and it helped him with his mission. She also was there when he exited as a reminder to those around of how she could for, forgive and still be peaceful and loving, even after losing him. She tried not to ever change her energy. We just see an energy of um, very... Uh, she like her energy wouldn't really be volatile. She wasn't really triggered easily. She was very stable, very very stable energy. It was a good role model for others. How did she discover she was pregnant? Um, what happened there? She had a dream. 
just sleeping. She had a dream. A visitor came. The visitor was glowing. The visitor was energy, a ball of energy, light. And I would speak to her. But more telepathic, telling her she would have a baby that was almost like Baby would just be there. So energetically, they would send the. Energetically, they would. Oh, we don't know how. This. The baby would be in the womb. They're almost like telling her it's going to be energetically inserted into the womb, but not saying it that way, but telepathically explaining what was going to occur. And she almost had to accept it. She had to be aware, they had to let her know, and then she had to accept it accept the information first for it to happen. And she did. She thought it was an angel. She thought it was something else higher than herself. And it was very important for this to happen. And she was asked. She felt like this, she felt a memory like she already knew. Like something about it was familiar. She already agreed to it before. Had they had other lifetimes together? And so it was a contract that they had to be mother and son. What do they want to learn from each other that lifetime? <laughs> they seem to really have a deep connection. <laughs> and we're seeing them. <laughs> they must have had some kind of sibling connection in a different place because we're seeing like siblings who love each other. And then when they came to earth, it was wanting to experience love, but in a different way where one was, I guess you could say the nurturer the complete nurturer. We're seeing like the baby phase where Jesus is a baby and Mary is the mother, learning how to love him and him learning how she could love him in such a fragile state, in such a, a, a way that only a mother could love. It's uh, so strong, the bond between mother and child. 
And they wanted to learn that from each other and experience what it was like. What did she know about what was going to happen around the surrounding events of the birth? She knew she would be guided the whole time. We feel like she had many dreams or visions of these beings. They were beings that would tell her things beforehand. So she would just listen to them and do what they would guide her to do. So if they told her, you must leave because something is going to affect all, all the firstborn sons, then they listen to the advice. They were giving her husband, they were sending him information to the same information so that he would believe Mary because they would both say what they were getting and they were both getting the exact same information and they knew, they both knew it was, I mean, they believed each other. They had to because they had to get out of there. They had to protect him. He had to be born. So they were getting guided the entire time. And the actual birth itself, what can you tell us about that? <sighs> so far out somewhere. We're seeing like a so we are seeing animals. We're seeing animals. We're seeing a donkey. She's on the ground. It's dirt. Um, They were guided to go to this location. They're away from others. It's quiet. It's private. It's, it's a good place. Uh, Joseph is there helping. They're speaking to him. They're guiding him and guiding her through the birthing process. They're saying things to them in their ears. They're supporting them both. They're giving them ideas. How to do this. It's all being divinely guided. They're telling them the baby's ready. She's pushing. He's helping pull the baby out. We feel like they're alone right now as this is happening, but they're not alone. They feel many high beings, spiritual beings around them. As there are, they just can't see them. They're helping as much as they can. The baby comes out. 
placed on Mary's chest. It was successful. Everyone's happy. The beings are happy. <laughs> They're tired. I feel like they're sleeping now. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Did they stay where they were? We hear that they had visitors or people knew that this birth was happening. What really happened? We had to. They were worried about. They were worried about. Almost like they didn't want people to know. They had a baby there right away. They weren't sure what to do. I feel like they were in there for a little while, but they were tired and they needed to find a place, a bed. I feel like they were there for a week. Joseph going into town, bringing things back, not wanting to cause attention to the baby for some reason. I think he was just really protective and didn't know what to do. I feel that from him. Bringing stuff back and forth, water, food. Mm. The one who owns the, the stall, the barn, the, you know, the baby. Um, for some reason, we're just seeing that place. It's like they, they want to go in the, they want to go in the town, but he's worried. He's protective of them. Doesn't want to draw attention to them. Oh, we see the visitors. It's like a star, but we don't know if it's like an energy ball. Up in the sky. They're seeing it. They're following it. This reminds her of the stories. Oh, the star is like alive. It's like a, like a being of some kind. It's there. Because they want them to know that the prophecy has been the prophecy is true, prophecy. And the ones who were back in there, it was divine intervention. There was an energy drawing them towards it and they didn't know why. They didn't know why, to, why they went in that direction. It was the beings. And when they saw the energy ball light, it was the sign and it was calling to them, welcoming them, and they couldn't. It was so strong. 
We see them in the barn. There's many blankets. They're bringing blankets with them. Mary is very, she's so calm. She doesn't ask for anything. Her presence is unique. Thank you. And so the bright light or that was in the sky, do you get a sense of what that was? It was like a light. It's like a huh. We feel like it has a consciousness. It does have a consciousness, but we don't know what it is. It's, it's like a being, but it doesn't look like one. We're not really sure what it is. Are you giving Sally visuals of it? We're showing her the light of it. We're not showing her the details of it. Would you be able to show her the details of it? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> It's interesting when you ask that, it looked like the outline of a being, a large, bright, lighted being. Hmm. Almost like an angel, very big. Looks almost humanoidish with light. It's like full of light all over itself and beaming out of itself that it's, looks huge. I could be mistaken to be a star because it's so bright that you wouldn't consider it to be anything but unless you looked at it extremely closely and you can see the outlines of a head arms you don't know if they're wings they'd be like energetic ones energy ones you see the eyes it's like a being Could we connect in with the consciousness of that being and ask it what it was doing there and who is it? Yes. I am here. Thank you. And um, we're curious to know why you were present for the birth of Jesus and who are you? We know this one being born. We feel like he had to be 
here at this time because he has a very big mission to accomplish. He wanted to be there to assist with it and to let others know the prophecies are true and to share the information. I was there to help beep down and send out the information to the ones who were already open-minded to it, who knew of the difference energies and connected with them. They were connecting in with my energy that I was sharing. I am full of light and love. And I'm here to show them where to go. Thank you. As you know, we love labels. And so who could you explain that you are to us, please? You could call us Dr. Ants. Big beings look like angels. You're present for that to assist with energies and to make sure all those who are present would be there. And so the light, was it just one big Arcturian being or is it a collective or is it something else? We are all there. That's why we look so huge. We have all our energies there. We're projecting it out. Many of us. But to the eye, if it appears one shape, However, there's many of the energies all together, making it bigger and brighter for all to see from far away. That's extraordinary. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you for coming in and assisting us uh, with that curiosity. I think many people have wondered what that star was so we'll ask um for sally's subconscious to return please and um, we have some questions yes we are back thank you um subconscious as you know it was my question to ask <laughs> Um, if Sally, by any chance or possibility, <laughs> had a <laughs> lifetime with Jesus, and it turns out she did. Um, what an interesting surprise, because as I was discussing with her, um, she had read a book um, that she believed was hopefully potentially true, where Jesus married Mary and had children and lived happily ever after. Um what would you like her to know about the information? Hmm. 
It did not happen. The book mentioned Jesus, Mary, Mary Magdalene and had children and settled down. That did not happen. That was something that others wanted to happen because they couldn't imagine how somebody so loving could die that way. And it was a way to give people a sense that we're all could be connected to Jesus. For him to have offspring with a bloodline that could potentially be ours. It was a sense of connection and hope. Um, yes, thank you. And I could understand that um, Sally seemed to love that book because that did give her that hope because she does love him, Jesus, so much that she actually really wanted it to be true. So now when she listens back to this session, what would you like her to know? <laughs> It's okay, it's okay to have believed that. And it's okay to have that you know, hope. Um, you still love him no matter what you believe. And of course, <laughs> he thinks it's funny. <laughs> It's funny to him because that's just one of those romanticized versions that we like at the end of the movie where the good guy always rides off into the sunset and lives happily ever after. He thinks it's sweet. It's sweet for people to want that. And he loves them. <laughs> What's the message that Jesus has that he wants to tell Sally today? Saying, he's saying some things right now. Um, <laughs> you are kind. You are kind woman. That's what he's saying. Your heart is always in the right place. Um, you give people so much more than what you think you are doing just by accepting them for who they are. It's like he's um, uh, sending his energy of it's like a mixture of so much, but it's like almost like like gratitude for remaining so um, non-judgmental in a time where in this day and age it's really easy to be judgmental because we're all almost like pitted against each other sometimes. It's um, <laughs> He's, it's almost like he's saying we're always judging one another so much 
So it's really hard to be non-judgmental, but the fact that you have been practicing it, knowing that you can, doing it helps a lot because you're showing that it can be done and that others can do it too. It's just a mindset of not believing the falsities that we're separate because we're all not separate. And that's why we judge others because we think we're different uh, than others. We're better than others. Others are better than us. That's not true. We're all one and the same. We're all equals. That was beautiful. Oh, goodness. And so... Um, I have a question for Jesus. Does he have any current reincarnations on this planet at the moment? He's saying no. Mm -hmm. He's saying no, but it's like his energy is all around. Mm -hmm. So it's like he's here, but he's not physically here. Mm -hmm. I understand. Thank you. Um, and for those people who are looking forward to Jesus' second coming, what does that really mean for them and what's really going to happen? <laughs> he's saying remembering Christ consciousness in each and every one of us remembering our own connection to our spiritual teams. It's remembering you're connected to God's source. It's remembering the truth of who we really are. This is an illusion. This separation is an illusion. This 3D is just temporary. This is really not who you are. Great reminder. Thank you so much. Is there, <laughs> is there any other final messages that you have for us, Jesus, before I recede you to where you belong? Mm. Love one another as I have loved you. Love all as I have loved you all. Mm. So special. Thank you so much. What are you doing now? Um, what is your soul essence doing? And what star seed were you? What collective like, were you connected to? Forgetting. Pleiadian. Mm -hmm. Star seed. Forgetting mm -hmm. Pleiadian. And you see, he's Watching Earth now. Watching Earth. Very connected to the Earth right now, but watching um watching. We just feel like he's sending down a lot of his like energy. Very connected, very watched, very much watching this. Will he be on the new earth in some form or another? <laughs> He's laughing. He's like, yes, of course. You, all you have to do is call me in and help you there. Do we get to choose whether we want to see you as the sweet baby Jesus or something else? <laughs> You can choose. Yes. Yes, you can choose. He's laughing. He's, he's, he's a, we're looking at him as the man and he's laughing. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. Out of curiosity, what's the significance of people getting imprints of the Roman who 
out with your exit point. This vacation. Sharing. Um, knowing the truth and sharing it to others, not hiding away from it, standing up in your power, not allowing others to make you feel like you need to. Um, it's like, like trying to abide by others and how others see you, like their standards. It's fully just pushing that all aside and standing up and speaking the truth no matter how it may affect others, if it's going to make them feel negative towards you or uncomfortable, it's still doing it. And to not be afraid of the reactions because it doesn't matter. It's your, if you know the truth, Stop idly ignoring that fact, pretending like you don't. Don't give in to peer pressure. Did the Roman know who Jesus was before the event of that day? He, there were always rumors. He was known. He was like, um, they, would, they, would whis they would whisper, gossip, talk about him. There's rumors of him and what he was doing to help people. He was doing healings. And they were in broad daylight and hundreds would witness it. It was um, profound, tangible evidence. The person would even tell others about the healing. Like someone would come unable to walk. He would heal them. They'd walk away and they'd tell everybody. And those who would watch would tell everybody. And it would come across to the ears of those soldiers. And it was a peculiar thing because when you know something to be true, you feel it in your gut. It's your knowing, it's your intuition, it's your teens. They were really sending him that message and he felt in his gut it was true, but he couldn't voice it. He had a job to do, and there was much pressure of not allowing um, individuals to feel empowered. Like the soldiers wanted them to feel scared and less than them. And this Jesus was a threat because. The people were beginning to strengthen themselves inwardly. They didn't like that. That he did know something was happening. Something was really happening. Because his gut was telling him. And his intuition. Thank you. Very, very interesting timing um, of all this information that's coming out in session. So thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I am conscious of how long the session has gone for, and I do know that there is some private session questions for Sally. So, um, 
so thank you very much. Um, I'll move on to the private questions now, please, subconscious. Mm -hmm. um, was the Mary lifetime, was that an imprint or was that her physical experience? We're seeing an imprint. Mm -hmm. And the significance of her having the imprint, what was she to learn from that? <sighs> what it was like to be in such an extraordinary situation with such an extraordinary being that had a mission to teach love and teach others how to connect with their spiritual teams. Thank you. And um, when did she get that imprint? Was it a recent one or she always had it for all of this lifetime? When she had the dream, she was um, about 12 years old. And she... She was having a hard time. She had a hard childhood. Um, she was happy, but she was feeling the, a lot of density. And we were, um, we were giving the information because we were trying to connect in with her. And it was starting to actually get to the point where we couldn't because she was getting really bogged down by the density at that age. And so we were bringing it up as a reminder that she could connect in with us and know that there's much more to life than the 3D. She was very 3D at that age, she didn't know. Thank you, thank you. And is that when she developed her love for Jesus? Yes, <laughs> yes, around that time, she was fascinated by him. <laughs> Thank you. And out of curiosity, she had a, a, a session where she saw her current daughter um, in a scene at Atlantis. Um, can we ask if that experience was a physical one in terms of did her daughter have a lifetime in Atlantis with her? Yes, she had a lifetime in Atlantis. However, she was a child that Sally did not know who she It was like a stranger. It was a child that was in the Atlantis island. Um, they only connected, though, at the very end when the child was under the water. And it's because Sally was so caught up in herself she was very self interested in that lifetime and so she wouldn't even if she saw a face of a child in the community she wouldn't remember it and when she saw the child going under that was the first time she actually felt like she connected fully to another away from the people around her it was someone like a lower a hierarchy, I guess you could say. And it was almost like they felt one. At that moment, she felt love for that child. I see. And so um, how many other lifetimes has the Sally's current daughter 
had um, on earth. We see two. Including this one. So the Lemurian, sorry, the Atlantis one, and then this current one now? Yes. And what else had she been doing in between that time? Um, what can you tell Sally? Mm. I see her exploring. Not here. Elsewhere. Uh, a different location. Different area. Pleiadian. Pleiades. Pleiadian. Pleiades. Pleiades. Mm. Showing us other planets. Thank you. And did you want to confirm or inform Sally of what the energy is that the daughter is picking up at night time? It's like a male energy, like a protector in the bedroom. She didn't like that one. It was, um, it has a commanding presence. It didn't mean to, but she felt the energy, the softer one, didn't have that reaction of her daughter as it walked by her. The older one, the one called grandmother, walked by her as she was relaxed. And she saw it. It was a shadow. It was see through. It was a see through shadow figure walking, but it didn't alarm her. She just got confused because she saw it. The presence in the bedroom that was standing there had a more strong, courageous, manly presence. And she felt that, but it was no harm towards her. It was watching her. Um, it's what you would call soul family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there any more information that you would like Sally to know about her daughter? <laughs> subconsciously. Subconsciously, she... Mm, knows these beings. And was actually excited. But consciously, she didn't remember that well. She's not really there yet. It's interesting. It's like we see like the back of her mind is like cheering and like excited, like wanting to like hug them. But then it's like the front of her mind is like, uh uh. <laughs> Thank you, I do understand. Um, the uh, question that um, Sally wanted to understand um, about family members, is any of them from the reptilian star seeds? She always thought one of them was, the face would pop in, the, in her head. And that's correct. That's why you keep seeing her face popping in your head. It was the same that was the bigger girl 
that lifetime. And then she was, Sally was the guy throwing the money at her. Learning from each other. Uh, she, though, we feel like our other lifetimes have not been so, um, she hasn't really been a victim of such um, in her other lifetimes. And then this lifetime with Sally, the sister-in-law, is mm, the sister-in-law has some traits that are very overbearing and manipulative, as many of his family members are. And they have this obsession with material things and money and how you look. And they are very charismatic, but it's only to serve them and what they want. So they can switch it really easily. Sally's aware of this though, because she's known them for so long. That's why she gets uncomfortable feelings a lot. Especially now, the more she awakens to her own self, the more she can feel the disconnect. And she doesn't get the bad feeling anymore from them like she used to because she can control her own emotions towards how they are. So now she's in more balance. Sally is in much more balance, which is nice. But she knows of their thoughts. She can sense thoughts. They're not usually... What they're saying to her is not what they're thinking. Mm. Okay, well, thank you for confirming that for her. I know that will be helpful. And why, out of curiosity, did she buy pepper spray and not a gun? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> she's really uncomfortable with the gun because she's never touched one. And barely even really looked at a, like a real gun. I mean, she's looked at one, but something about it is just so foreign to her that it'd be, it was kind of embarrassing, almost weird for her to purchase one. So she went to the alternative of pepper spray, hoping that it would be helpful. Okay, thank you. Um, is it in part of your life contract to um, help someone have an exit point? She doesn't feel, she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to, but we are, we've been sending her lots of visuals of empowerment kind of like superheroes, how they're saving the day and they have to do certain things in order to save the day. We're sending her that. Um, there is a gun in the attic. There are bullets she can use if needed. Um, it's not by accident that it's available. Um, she has never killed anyone. She's been killed many times. She's not comfortable with this question right now. We can feel her not wanting to know, but she will at some point give someone their exit point, yes. Thank you, we understand. And we understand that there's potential contracts between those two people. Or... Um, yes, there was certain things that need to be repaid and people want them. People want their karma to actually be finished after this or before this, before things are done. 
So she will actually help repay karma. I see. Okay. That is understandable. Did they cause karma against her directly or is she just helping them? Um, she's helping them like they've done things that have been very naughty in past lives, you would say. <laughs> And they have not had a chance to actually get it fully repaid because it's the time is really quick now. And she's actually going to do it for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so with that information, she will be more understanding her role that she needs to play? Yes. We get a sense she now knows that then she won't feel any sense of guilt because it'll be almost like a contract mm. she won't gain any karma herself for it no and we will we will direct her she will know she will be aware of why and we will direct her it's great that she's got such good trust and faith in you for her to know thank you so much mm -hmm.